Welcome everybody to Psychic Nerds 34, uh, surrounded by a bunch of special people or weirdos, depending on uh, how you want to classify us. We have Queen Maria. Uh, looks like you're in hiding, potentially. Are you on the run? Yes, she is. She can't even speak right now. We have Han. Uh, Crypto Block, thanks for coming back, man. Uh, kind of missed you and uh, like to get, kind of get caught up with your story and see how you're doing. Uh, Barefoot Doc, very jealous of your hair. Looks, looks wonderful. Samantha Ooh, Jane you. James, uh, always jealous of your hair. Uh, David, <laughs> jealous of your <laughs> boyish good nope. looks. I refer to myself as weirdo. Oh, okay. What's up, weirdo? Uh, Didi Solani, uh, Siani, is it Siani? Yes. Siani. Welcome. Hey. So th yeah, thanks for joining us. So this will be a lot of fun for us um, to have a new person. Uh, and we have winter down there. Glad you can make it, buddy. Uh, you mixing any drinks today? Or no? uh, 5.30 in the morning, coffee time. Okay. So no wine and Coke yet? Uh, that was last night. Whoops. Okay. All right. It's 3.30 here, Steve. Oh, man. Oh, oh I don't feel too bad. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Nice. We have human avatar with us. Uh, and sometimes, sir, you remind me of a robot. I don't know why. <laughs> Sometimes I get visions of robots when I think of you. Um, maybe you're controlling. Have you ever made a robot? Are you interested in robotics? Uh, no and yes. But okay. I mean, robotics is just one of the things I'm interested in. I know. You're, you're a man of many talents. And then the ghost of Santino down there. Um, can you hear us, buddy? Are you in the void right now? Oh, thumbs up. You can hear us. He's somewhere in between. Um, I'm here, Moo. How are you? Doing great, man. What a what Good. a spectacular week, right? Um, <laughs> filled with ups and downs and memes and uh, nonsense and uh, talks of power consumption and uh, crazy action. nonstop, right? Nonstop news. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, hash rates and uh, I saw that Deutsche Bank is uh, they're going to allow uh, preferred customers to get the bitcoins and the bitcoin caches and the XRPs and the Ethereum's, and I think there was one more. Uh, through them. So that's pretty interesting. Um, so maybe rise from the dead for the Deutsche Bank. I thought that was interesting. Anybody else see that article about Deutsche Bank? Yeah. Every... Yeah. Yeah. What do you guys think about that? Uh, we had kind of marked them for dead, uh, yet they seem to uh, want to get into the crypto market. Any thoughts? Well, Germany is in general pretty far in the crypto market. In 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 Stuttgart, they have it. Uh, they have an extra exchange for that, like where um, next to the stock exchange. Yeah, I've heard this. Um, there was a news article, David, about I want to say about three or four years ago, where they talked about. Uh, and I'm sorry if I say the wrong words, okay? Because I'm just try I'm trying to remember. So I don't know if it's like Bavaria or Bavaria, if that's an area uh, in Germany. And they mentioned being able to potentially get cryptos from like a post office. Has this materialized or is this just kind of went away or? I haven't heard that. Maybe they put up some like like Bitcoin um, machines there, okay. but I haven't heard anything. I know about Austria, they put some up there. Oh, was it Austria? It, you know what? I think it might've been Austria, David. Yeah, Bavaria and Austria is pretty close together. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, Didi, uh, let's go to you. So right off the bat, uh, thanks for being here. Uh, thanks for wanting to be a part of this uh, cadre of weirdos uh, inside the Psychic Nerds uh, <laughs> Discord. And you're going to get access to the secret society over there, which is not really that secret. Um, but, you know, we kind of let things fly a little bit more over there, maybe. Um, Tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you find us? How did you find Sam? Did you run into, you know, the psychic meetup with Rudy? Um, yeah, I'm just kind of curious. Yeah. So I'm honored to be a part of your weirdo group. Uh, that's number one. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, you. I actually met Sam. I, I started in crypto in 2017. Actually, I was supposed to supposed to start maybe a little bit before, but I was too busy with uh, real estate and all kinds of real estate investment. And even though I got the knowledge back then, I just didn't press the trigger. I was too occupied. And then in 2017, when I, uh, 
it, it's a it's a pretty interesting story because I was working so hard in the real estate and I was doing all these investment property and I actually went out of state and doing tax deed. And I remember one night I was, it was already like nine o'clock and I was not in the best area in the state of Georgia working on a tax deed investment property. And I said, I wish that there will be another way of some sort to make a living. Can it be possible to make a living more easier? Uh, because I'm always considering myself as a person that worked really hard. And out of nowhere, whoosh, I got like this realization that I already knew about crypto before, but then it was, Didi, you need to go ahead and pull the trigger, get into the investment and make it a hobby. And I actually, when I saw Sam for the first time, I was so attracted to this uh, amazing individual that is so intelligent. You don't see this type of personalities out there. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt very comfortable and obviously comfortable with the group. So I got in right away. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much my story. And uh, always in the chat, I called you guys my support group because you guys really are. And even for the newbies uh, that just coming in, just to have a support group that's going to surround you and remind you and make you feel optimistic, even though sometimes it's down and up. This is just the market. This is the way that it is. Uh, this is what's really make me throughout that whole period since 2017. So thank you, everybody. Well, thank you. Uh, so glad you're here. And, you know, I think Crypto Spartan said it pretty, pretty well last week that, uh, you know, one of the things that helps is to be a, a surrounded by a bunch of people that are interested in the same topics, uh, whether that be woo or cryptos or some other things, and just kind of be going through these ups and downs. And I think Sam's always kind of, you know, relayed that, uh, you know, it's all of us just kind of holding on together and, and progressing together. And it's, it's, hey. It's always just been an amazing group to hang out with. So I'm glad you're enjoying it. I know I have. And, yes. you know, I get all these nice messages every week about how much people appreciate maybe something I've shown or something they've seen on Rudy's psychic meetup or something that Sam has mentioned uh, or just interactions on the, on the discord. And I try and always say, you know, thank you. Uh, but, you know, we learn as much, you know, from you guys as well, or I learn as much, you know, from, from people just conversing and talking about cryptos. And I've been doing this a long time and it's wonderful that I have, I have other people or weirdos as you call us uh, to uh, <laughs> hang out with, which is, which is really great because there have been times in my personal life when I, I haven't really been able to talk about this stuff where I really annoy the crap out of people by uh, talking about this kind of technology or stuff. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yes. Crypto blog, how you been doing, man? Yeah, I've been doing pretty good, Mu. Um, I've just been making, uh, just organising things. Um, I'm, I'm a bit of a thrashing machine, um, just swinging widely. Um, uh, it's a miracle I'm here, but I'm here. And, uh, yeah, just one step at a time. Well, good yeah. for you. Good for you. Uh, crypto blog, I... I don't know why I want to talk about this, but I kind of do. Uh, you have a you have a mining background. Um, no, it was more construction. Construction. Um, yeah, in resources. Okay. So yeah. So um, yeah, just I'm, yeah. Go. I'm, I'm comp uh, just kind of curious about. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of inflation here in the United States with uh, raw materials, uh, lumber, things like this, kind of going through the roof. Where you're at, are you experiencing the same thing? Have you been paying attention to this kind of some exorbitant uh, multiples in prices related to construction materials? Uh, well, I'm not involved. Uh, I'm retired now, but um, yeah, pretty much uh, uh, real estate. Um, it's just gone crazy. Um, and all, all the materials, um, oops, sorry, all the materials, all the materials, like the materials, they're all going up. Um, but uh, yeah, I haven't seen the inflation that you, that I've, uh, I've seen on the charts that, uh, that some of you have um, posted on Discord. Sorry. Yeah, it's no, that's fine. Uh, that's that's just kind of curious. I was just kind of curious to see how the rest of the world is doing uh, with that. Uh, David, in your neck of the woods, are you experiencing some of the same things? Have you been paying attention to any of this? Uh, 
Hang on, just have to unmute myself. Yes, sir. I was, I was just pouring a drink. <laughs> Good. And I didn't pay attention. What was the question? Uh, inflation. Are you seeing any sort of inflation in either? Not uh, yet. Not, okay. not yet. Not so yet. It's not really in construction. But it, it will come. It will come. Totally. Okay. Uh, but I'm hearing about breaking down of supply chains. Okay. Like, like start of it. So that's how we experienced it in the United States too. Uh, last summer, we began to have some issues with a bunch of raw materials. So if you were to go to your big box store and want to pick up some fencing material or metal yeah. or PVC like pipe, that, like, yeah, 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 some parts missing out, not everything, not not totally, but like bits and pieces. Very, it's very it's starting. It's starting. Sam, what about you? Uh, where you're at, are you starting to see some things like this, uh, either breakdown in supply chain or just uh, raw yeah. materials kind of going up? And of course, with what I've been going through with my house from, you know, my the house that I have is built in 1895. I was just always attracted to these buildings and I didn't really know why. It was probably because I'm a medium. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was probably why I was attracted to such old buildings. I, I love their high Absolutely. ceilings, the moldings. You know, I mean, just the way that they were built, just so solid and big, and it's just uh, such a great building. But we had to recently um, re replace the furnace, and we went with propane. I'm doing, getting some work done right now. The uh, boards, I'm getting some barn board put up because I tore down a wall. So of course you can't tear it all down. You have to have some edges that are, and those are all ripped apart. So I'm going to put barn board over it. Well, it's very expensive um lumber is up quite a bit i was talking to the guy locally here because i was buying i had to get a new thermostat because of course you know everything can't go perfectly the thermostat is now broken so i had oh, to go man. and buy one yeah the furnace like li like literally kept running it was crazy oh no we had to like turn off yeah. the heat yeah, yeah it was just oh, this is so annoying so i was getting but i talked to the guy but he said fencing he said, if you're looking for like the five foot fence, he goes, you can't get any of those right now. And he just went down a short list of stuff that you can't get right now. And so what I'm doing is like, I'm getting a heat pump put into that room. I'm getting a cement floor um, poured. I'm getting my stuff as quickly as I can. I am just like I bought my car in December because I wanted a particular type of vehicle. It's a higher end one, but middle range, you know, and I wanted to get what I want what I wanted and I knew that if I waited that might not come to fruition for me and I also got information that even if let's say two years from now let's say I I moved to Mexico and it's yeah. like oh I don't want this car anymore and I'm going to fly there and I'll just sell this car um the people on the other side were telling me that I would literally get the same amount of money that I paid for it oh wow and it's two years later now don't mind the fact that I mean, I've barely put 2,000 kilometers on it since buying it in December. It's not like I didn't need a car. So the mileage is not going on it a lot. I'm just doing like the errands for Sam Jam and stuff with it. It's not, I mean, we have another vehicle. But um, the thing is, is that I'm really glad that I did get it. And there's even um, like my husband is getting tires and rims. And yeah. we, he showed me last night, he was going through and he showed me on the website. He's like, look, sold out, sold out, sold out. And he had to go to a few different places to get these rims for his truck. And yeah. then tires, again, same thing, sold out. Because I, I told him, I was like, if you want to get anything, just get it now. I said, the money's evaporating anyways, hurry up and just whatever it is. And you see, when you get new tires, you don't need new ones for a couple of years. Because right. you swap out, you know, your winters with your, you know, yep. all, yeah. So, yep. um, yeah, so you're looking at your, your butt's probably covered for two to four years, depending on whether or not you swap out your tires. And these are the things you got to think of. Like, I've now got a new furnace. I don't have to worry about that. I've got a heat pump being installed in about three weeks, which will also give air conditioning. I got today's prices for it. You right. know, but if I wait a year, I'm thinking that that $3,600 heat pump is going to be like, you know, $7,000 if, if I can get it. Yeah, really interesting. I want to show a news article here, uh, CPI in the United States. And um, you'll notice the date here and what it correlates with uh, the last time we went through something like this. So just give me one second. So this came out uh 
a couple days ago, uh, inflation speeds up in April as consumer prices leap 4.2% fastest since 2008. You guys remember what happened in 2008, right? So I don't know if this, uh, I think this is going to be pretty foretelling about what we're about to go into. Uh, anybody have some thoughts about that? Uh, yeah, I actually would like to share uh, that we have a garage door company and the manufacturer actually raised the price in 10% every month and a half for the past four months. Oh, wow. That's wow. a lot. So That's a lot. Is, yeah, and this is just concerned to the price of steel. I was very surprised and I never saw anything like that before. Yeah, it's incredible. I've, I've known some builders to mention to me that uh, new home prices have, have risen, uh, what, what did they say, tacking on like an extra $30,000 for some pretty nice houses just because of the increase in lumber. Um, and then used homes are going at a, for a premium here. So pre-built are going uh, at a pretty high clip here. I had a family member, it was pretty interesting, um, sell a home um, and got into a, a sale agreement this week. Um, amazingly sold the house for exactly the price I told him he would sell it for, uh, which was uh, pretty nice for me. So nice little practice for me. And then, um, but I think that's, what's pumping the existing, uh, real estate. And I'd, I'd be happy to hear from anybody that's got a real estate background, but I feel like that's pumping the existing real estate because the new builds are, are having to increase so much to keep up with the raw material costs, which is really, really crazy. Uh, it's thoughts? a contributing factor. It's a contributing factor, but uh, real estate is primarily pumping because uh, the system is just being liquefied and the money has to go somewhere and it's finding its way into real estate. That was the first sign of we were having inflation, right? So yeah. when you see these, these uh, cockamamie uh, government stats saying, you know, inflation's at 2%, 2.1%, they conveniently leave out food energy and real estate out of those numbers. So it's like, have you bought a house lately? So it's not so much that homes are going up, it's that your currency is going down, right? It's just sure. costing you more because you need more of your currency to buy that house. So you have money chasing money, chasing hard assets, which is causing them to go up. So um, now, now, as in all things, nothing goes straight up in a straight line. I suspect like we've already saw the other day where lumber went limit down. In other yeah. words, uh, you know, what, uh, you know, the old saying, the cure for higher prices is higher prices, right? So what happens is higher prices brings on more supply and then they flood the market. And then, you know, all of a sudden there's lumber everywhere. Mills start to, they get caught offside, not expecting all that. So there's a few months where things go nuts and then they flood the market, you know, because they catch up. You'll see some of that dampen some of this, but it's only a pause. It's only a pause. The real, the real show, the real fireworks comes and comes uh, a little further down the road. And by the way, in, in, inflation will rage into the, into the remainder of this decade. Yeah, thanks for saying that. Uh, there was a news article here lately. Uh, there's some let's just say entertainment venues. I don't want to be too specific, but there's entertainment venues around where I'm at and they are having, so I live in an area that produces a lot of automobiles um, and my whole state produces a lot of automobiles. And there's a lot of entertainment uh, venues that have kind of went dormant because of the COVID stuff or COVID, I should probably say or 19, that would probably be better. Um, and they're having to end up parking these vehicles uh, due to chip shortages uh, that are not complete vehicles, but uh, just kind of stocking the parking lots and just letting this, this inventory sit, which I thought was uh, pretty interesting. Um, anybody bench? So I've been looking at uh, for a car, right, or a truck. And uh, it's been amazing to me. The lots that are normally full of automobiles are basically have nothing. And this is, this is new cars. This is uh, slightly used cars. Um, it's pretty amazing. Uh, anybody else ran into this in their neck of the woods? Just kind of curious. Well, we talked before about um, my friend that is the <clears throat> CEO of a multiple dealerships. Yeah. And their Honda dealership is empty. They told her several months, just no cars. And we have still on hold the last 
Dodge Ram 2500 that's coming to this side of the Mississippi. It's on a train. It was supposed to be here on the 29th of last month and she's not sure where it is yet. So if I was really waiting for it and really needed it and you know she's gonna give me a great deal two weeks ago when we told her we may not need it, she was like, great, because I'll charge somebody else ten dollars to $15,000 more than you. Like she's got a waiting list of people that want that truck. That's not, it, there's nothing special about that truck. Yeah. It's just a 2500, but it's the last one coming. And yeah. she really is at a loss because, she, you know, she doesn't understand they're still going to auctions and there's no cars there. Like where there should be six and 700 cars, there's like 50. That's incredible, so, man. It's incredible. She's never... gone from she's gone from down here to driving all the way up to Pennsylvania to see if she can buy used cars. So it's not just here, and she comes back empty-handed. Well, I like what Sam said. Uh, she, she got a feeling that she would be able to, if she wanted to, sell that used car for basically what she paid for it, and that's kind of what I'm seeing. The the kind of uh, slightly uh, used. Uh, used cars are going for as much as uh, a lot of the new cars just because uh, the new cars are hard to get so uh, really incredible um, yeah. you have a, a perfect storm you got yeah. the perfect storm supply lines are have not been normalized because of covid you've got in money chasing money uh you know and you've got people that are getting checks um you know from the government their savings has never been higher and they're not spending money on what they'd normally be spending on so you just have the perfect storm it won't stay this elevated, this, like the intensity will slow down, but then it'll pause, but then it'll pick up again. Then it'll, it'll pick up again and begin to strengthen again. Yeah, a lot of us um, last summer, Sam, I think we started talking about this on the boards and um, you on your live streams, uh, started feeling a real intense feeling like we needed to get things like computers yeah. Um, oh yeah. I went in, I just, I would just bought like all the computers that I needed for the new staff that we had to hire to do the editing. And we're pulling a lot of this stuff out. You know, it was so funny. I went to my physio appointment the other morning and my physiotherapist, we were talking about the COVID-19 and she said to me, she goes, did you know that it turns out that it came from a lab in Wuhan? <laughs> And I was like, as a matter of fact, I heard that. I said, did you know it was a woman that she goes, yes, it was. It was a female lab tech. I said, yep. I said, remember I told you I was doing editing yeah. from stuff that I yeah. was taught. Well, cause she knows I'm into cryptos. Right. Cause yeah. I was telling her her house, you mentioned 30 something thousand dollars. She told me she's one of the people who's trying to get a house built and she said that the quote came in at $36,000 more than when they originally, like before they were ready to build, they yeah. got like a quote just to get an idea what they were going to have to get a mortgage for, et cetera, six months ago. So they could make plans, but then they had to get an up-to-date quote just for the lumber alone, 36000 more six months later. And this young couple, this is their first home. And I said to her, and they were going to put it off. And I said to her, I was like, don't put it off. It's just going to get worse. Mm -hmm. Do not put it off. Yeah, it's quite incredible. Mm -hmm. It really is quite incredible. I know uh, I didn't need new tires for, for one of my trucks and uh, I went out and got new tires. I just, I was kind of obsessed. And when I get that obsessed feeling, I think somebody mentioned on the board last, I don't know, October, hey, what are you buying this week? And I'm like, new tires for the truck. <laughs> um, just just the same thing. Yeah. <clears throat> exactly the same thing. Thanks for the uh, reminder. I got to get winter tires for yeah. uh, my vehicle. Oh, wait a minute. No, I don't. Because I'm not going to be summer. here for when the snow falls. No, ah. no more, no more <laughs> I'm winter taking, I'm getting, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, forget that. I, I, was, having, I, was, having, uh, I was having trouble sourcing tires for my Vespa. So they're really, really <laughs> difficult to get. <laughs> well, just get a bicycle, Santino. I was going to say, why? It's so much cooler to have a Vespa, Queen Maria. Why would I just get a, a boring bicycle? Yeah, uh, Vespa is legendary. Keep that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Especially for you, Especially for you. And I want to yeah. see a picture, Santino and a Vespa. Yeah. No, I don't. <laughs> I actually don't want to see those are the pictures yeah. I don't want to see. Especially oh, no. with, with a I'm helmet on. I'm sending one directly to Queen Maria <laughs> of me on the Vespa. 
and, and just like crypto spartans here maybe we can get yes. some chart and done sure Mm-hmm. I want to I want to show off my Lamborghini first, uh, okay. but first I want to make a joke. Uh, right. Santino, they still let let people drive at your age, or? <laughs> ha, ha, ha. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find the best emoji, which nobody will see, but you'll see. Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Crap! That sounds no, ominous. It's this. It's this, Lou. It's this. That's what he's showing you. <laughs> eh. Eh. I want. Okay, I want to show. That. Speaking of Vespas and Lamborghinis, uh, I want to show off a pretty sweet Lamborghini right there. You guys see that? Oh, it's such a cutie. No, that's Santino. Oh, Oh, nice. That's that's Santino's ride right there. That's what. Oh, that's that's tailor made. Yeah, man. I love that Santino. I wouldn't mind sitting on the back of that. Yeah, of course. (laughs) Who wouldn't? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It reminds me. It reminds me of the ride in Dumb and Dumber when two dudes ride on that together. Imagine, (laughs) imagine driving that with a fresh Negro drink, you know, a cigarette, you know, and you're just driving through the streets, taking it all in. That's life. That's life, Moo. No, See, I think, Santino, I would agree with you because we lived in uh, Italy for four months. I would agree. See, I can see myself doing that in Italy, France, but in Canada, mm, no, nah. not so much. Have you seen the size of your potholes? <laughs> <laughs> the drink will like, you'll be wearing the drink and your cigarette, you'll be. I don't want to know what happens. Is, is that where you? Oh yeah, you know what? A, a Negroni sounds good. Yeah. Well, I a guess pothole where you stick your pot. drinks all in here. With a oh, stick. that's a good idea, huh? <laughs> One of those helmets. Yeah, with you've done this before, holders. huh? <laughs> I, I had a Vespa for all of a year, long time ago. Did you love it? <laughs> Sorry? Did you love it? Uh, no. <laughs> I, I bought a motorbike of my drummer after. <laughs> there you go. There you go. It's funny, though, because a few years ago, I, I was curious about some of these scooters. So I'm looking up like high performance scooters. You know, of course, they were all Italian made. And uh, some of these things were amazing, like compared to the like the performance specs compared to like motorcycles. Like they mm. they take those scooters pretty serious <laughs> in that part <laughs> of the world, right? They're a fashion statement, Moo. Can you imagine driving mm. past the Fontana di Trevi? <laughs> I know, I mean, right? I want a Vespa. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was probably are fashion like you said about it is a fashion step i was like when you hear this is how you're supposed to dress and this is what you're supposed to have and you're like oh wow yeah <laughs> hey yeah Spartan. we don't call them scooters we don't call them scooters oh what do you call them hooters i mean what do you call them? <laughs> we can you pick can up, say that you can say pick up trucks way. pick up trucks lamborghinis what do you call them He doesn't want to say. We could talk about motorbikes all day. I'm looking at the Ducati Super Sport 2021 model. Dude. Um, yeah, it means a lot of bikes. If I lived where you lived, life, right? we would go test those because that sounds uh, awesome. And isn't this an interesting thing that now we're like- talking about spending money on things like that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we having a green yeah. day, boys. <laughs> and, and, you know, we discussed, we were discussing, it's like, would it be nice if I had a family car that I'm okay with keeping clean and then have a, an adult car that no kids are allowed, no drinks are allowed. And it's actually leather. It's just, and you just go with the flow. You build the, it kisses the road so perfectly. Wind in your Lambo. hair. No, <laughs> not for me. Not a fan of Lambos. You need a roadster. Sports car. Yeah, sports car. Mm. A Porsche. I, it's too low. Porsche. No, not a Porsche. No, I'm a either Aston Martin or a bike. Oh. Suzuki BMW BB9. bike, actually. All right, yeah, that's it. Or. Let's all go get motorbikes. It's been decided. Yeah, um, we have our own club, and we can have you know those uh, Harley Davidson on the jacket. We can have our logo. <laughs> nerds. I don't just say nerds on yeah, that. that's right. That's right. Nerds. We'll be so intimidating. Nerds. Nerds. It's nerds gone one. wild. Intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> nerds, nerds, after, nerds after hours. Nerds oh, that's after great. hours. That's great. Um, Spartan, uh, where did he go? He, he's gone. He's like, um, you're not doing charts. I'm done. Yeah, he's like, you guys are so boring. Um, he wants us to talk about Vespa a little more. I know, right? <laughs> well, let me pull out some charts because we should probably do that, uh, or whatever you would call these. They're not really charts. 
<clears throat> I guess it can't charge. Um, let's take well, uh, if you got rockets and uh, doggy on it, then Rudy will. Where's Rudy? Yeah. Where is Rudy? I thought it was going to be here. Ditched us <laughs> the last second. Yeah, I want to see his rockets and all. I know, right? Um, so I know you guys hate this one minute time frame, so let me fix that. Uh, Santino, I think you're going to be the boss on this one. Uh, 45 minutes, 30 minutes, four hour? What do you want? It, it, can you go to the daily? Where it sure. says one day, yeah. Holy crap, okay. So before we get started, um, oh God, let's do something else here. I'm back, I had a computer issue. I know, I tried to hack your machine. I figured, <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's what that warning bell was. <laughs> it's like fire. Um, Let's take a look at this weekly because I thought this was interesting. I was looking at this the other day. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven weekly closes in the green on ETH. Um, hate to be an ETH boy, but man, that makes me excited. Um, but let me go back to the day. Santino, what do you want to look at, bud? Uh, well, we got Spartan here. He's probably got his charts ready to go. So Okay. Yeah. Spartan, you ready to uh, rock, dude? Uh, that super farm that you had up, it's just, you know, it's just, it, that's, it's suffering simply because the NFT space has been selling off since this one kind of, uh, uh, since you, you were, yeah, since it launched. Yep. So it just kind of launched at the wrong time. But yep. you're, when NFTs come back, I suspect super farm will, will be one of the ones that will lead uh, because it's been acting pretty good compared to its peers. A lot of its peers have sold off a lot more and it's still up from when it launched. So even it if is. you bought it at launch, I mean, what's it at today? Dollar 82. Mm -hmm. Dollar 80. You're still up. You're still up a little bit. Yeah. And it's you up got 50 that nice reversal today. hammer there, like that, that uh, red candle and then the, the green candle right after it is pretty positive. So I think with DeFi, I think DeFi is going to be the next area and we're already seeing it. I was seeing that a few weeks ago. We're going to see that start to really pick up steam, and it is um, NFT will follow DeFi. That's that's my guess, but it's the DeFi space is going to catch all the love for a while. Sam was pretty excited on Thursday. Uh, some people were shouting out some tokens and uh, said that uh, Super would have been a really good one to grab. And um, if you followed, uh, not her investment advice, but if you followed her lead, then uh, you may be up fifty percent today, which is real cool. Uh, Spartan, you want to show some charts here, bud? Why not? Why not? Why not? All right. And, and do you have a cold drink? Because that's kind of important. Of course I do. Okay. What kind on. of Spartan would I be without a cold drink? I know, right? I agree. I will. I am downing the the fine. I found the best hard sites of hard seltzer. The Mike's hard lemonade seltzer. Okay. Is by far the best one out there. Okay, I will try that one. I, your I mean, because most of the seltzers just taste, they have too much carbonation and they taste just like water. This one actually has more flavor. Good. I'll try that one. No extra sugar. <laughs> 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 Gotta watch those carbs. Speaking of sugar, is anybody else like when uh, Queen Maria gets all whipped up and then she says, oh, sugar? Because I always oh, laugh. Sugar. Oh, sugar. I say sugar melon. <laughs> oh. Barefoot Doc's up bright and early today. I know, man. She's <laughs> she never went to sleep with her night bags. Right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So here here's our primary Doge coin Doge coin chart. I figured I'd start with the one that is getting the most news lately. But if you draw a fib on the last swing from here, the lowest to the highest of this big move, it came right down here to that fifty to thirty eight percent retracement level. I thought this was going to hold, but then. But then, you know, Elon had to say, I'm not taking uh, Bitcoin anymore. So we are, so it drove it down a little bit, but we consolidated here for four hour chart here for about a day, day and a half. And then I was talking to U of M fan and he goes, I think, I think it's going to get back to 53 cents. And then, I don't know, then he must've known Elon was going to say, but I still like the crypto space. <laughs> so it's like, it just keeps, you know, up, down, up, down, here we go. But Looks like we got some serious momentum here. This is a big, huge candle. It's going to take a while for that momentum to to subside. Is that the right word? I think so. Subside. Uh, subside. That's it. Thank you. Because um, it engulfed the prior one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight candles. 